Colored Coin Pioneer Nilly Coins is in the house. Uh, very excited for this conversation. This is going to be a very conceptual and philosophy based podcast. I can I can already already feel. Uh, Nilly created Nilly Coins back in 2014, which is a colored coin. And for those that don't know, colored coins is a precursor to NFTs. It's not necessarily an NFT, but it helped pioneer and pave the way for the concepts of what NFTs actually are today. Nilly is hanging out in the historical NFT space, and I just had to have a conversation with her. She has very unique perspectives on the NFT, on what NFTs actually are, and I want to learn more about what Nilly Coins actually is. So, Nilly, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. And and in the background for the people that are watching, she has one of her unique artworks for for Nilly Coins um, on the back. So that's really cool, uh, Nilly. Just so we can have a, a starting point, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself before before Colored Coins. I tried to do a little bit of research. I know Nilly Coins was originally backed by your artwork, so you have some sort of pretty sustained art history um, in your background. So just tell us a little bit about who Nilly is. Okay, um, I'm an artist actually. <laughs> I started uh, in, in, uh, came to the space as an artist. I didn't uh, eventually call myself an artist after creating which many of the uh, creator of NFT eventually uh, uh, name themselves as being an artist, which is perfectly fine, but I consider myself an artist and came in as an artist. I've been doing art forever, uh, let's say since I was 18, and it's a few years since then, uh, and had uh, some, uh, some shows, had a studio all my life, lived in New York for a while, all because of, I, because being an artist in New York was the place to be an artist, uh, and I worked most of my life as a, a scenic artist, which is not, which is not like uh, my art, but is using every everything an artist, uh, every uh, um, qualification an artist have. So um, my life has been around uh, art all the time, and uh, in the past. Uh, 10 years, since actually 2007, I started going very conceptual with my art. And my first uh, conceptual digital pieces were making uh, Twitter my art form. I actually created uh, all kind of, sim you couldn't have picture at the time, Using I was using the 140 characters, all kind of symbols and all, all many different other conceptual things to create my uh, work and also deleted it after half a year because it was part of the concept, having nothing left. So <laughs> I have a few copies of it, like hard copies. And you can, if you Google uh, Etwata, you can find uh, a little a few mentions of it in the past, but, um, and then later on I got into crypto. And interesting. I, I keep seeing this idea of conceptual art popping up, especially pr pretty recently. Um, there, there's a trend within like the, the Goblin Town uh, NFT that's very popular talking about con conceptual art, um, where the idea that what you see isn't actually what you get. Also with uh, Funk's conceptual art towards punks and, and Rider Rips, Bored Apes, they, they compare as conceptual art or performance art. Um, so it, it kind of is this definition that there's much more meaning behind the thought that uh, precedes the image than, than what the actual image really is. What, what type of conceptual art or would, did you dive into before getting into crypto? Or if you had to describe it, how would you describe it if I was five years old? For what I did before, or with regard of my to the to the coins that I did, uh, I did them. Yeah, uh, let's let's start with before. I just want to make sure that we uh, fill in some of the gaps before setting it up for the colored coins, because okay. that's okay. also a big concept as well. 
So I think the, the most uh, considerable work I did was the Twitter piece, I call it. It was performance art. And it was making the social platform, like the social network, being the art form. And some of the pieces I created was actually created by the conversation. Uh, for example, like I, I did one piece that I just uh, broke the word art into art, ah, rah, rah, all kind of like, you know, like broke the, the word. So it sounded like kind of weird sound. And then some someone that their picture was a robin retweeted it, so it it looked and it sounded a bit a little bit like a bird. The, what a bird name is, but the fact that someone with a robin picture that the name was robin, it was totally arbitrary. But they retweeted it, and that was my this was what I consider the piece itself. Yeah. So uh, the cons concept of making a social network. And uh, as part of, of the art, art was very conceptual, and it also translated, uh, moved forward with, with uh, what I did on Bitcoin Talk, because part of the Nili Coins was the Bitcoin Talk, which was the social network, and everything that happened at the time in Bitcoin was announced there, and I used the announce announcement. Yeah, go ahead. You? Yep, yep, I'm still yeah. here, go ahead. Okay. I, I uh, use the announcement uh, forum as the part of the art, uh, and the people totally didn't understand what I was doing because it wasn't right. It wasn't like it was like, uh, you know, they expected to see just the explanation about the art. But in, for example, in uh, Disney Coin, very soon I started like uh, using. Uh, having D Minnie and uh, Mickey presenting it as character and having dialogues there. So it was very confusing for people. But this was part of the, this is the art. For me, this was the URL part of the the art of, of the coins. And that's that's exactly what, what makes it fun that I've come to, to understand a little bit more. Conceptual art and performance art is much right. more, it's much more about the artist's mind than it is about uh, the artist's output. You're, 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 you're kind of, right. you're, you're expressing these intricate thoughts or this intricate idea through art, but it's not the traditional art means that's been uh, popularized in the mainstream, like a Picasso or Van Gogh. Yes, those, those artists maybe put their concepts into it, but it's about the visual aesthetic first, whereas conceptual and performance art is about uh, articulating the idea through a non-traditional means that, that gets displayed. So it's it's much more in depth. Is that, does that sound right? So there is a few layers for conceptual. Conceptual can be dealing with the, uh, with the medium itself, which is more on the Sometimes it's in the minimal type of art, which is part, again, of Nili Coins. I really, uh, an important part of it was uh, uh, claiming the token itself as the object of art. So this is like, would be on the, um, um, on the minimal type of uh, conceptual art. Then you have appropriation art, which pop art on different uh, on its different uh, levels is associated with it you know ready made and uh, coca cola mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know uh, warhol all this is very strong and very well familiar in in uh, the history of art and this is one of the reason also like i where i went with it i wanted to do things that are very familiar simple clear because the concept that I tried to convey was very complex. You know, like talking about the economy, talking about very complex issues, uh, tokenization, the future of, uh, of how I, the entire financial market gonna look like. Yeah. And I wanted to use um, those memes, those uh, logos, those, those companies as memes that can make the explanation easier because you want, you know it's familiar, you know what to do with it. And in terms of art, it's also very clearly related to art, art history. 
Absolutely. So I pulled up conceptual art. I'm going to read off the definition and then, and then we can move on. So conceptual art also referred to as conceptualism is art in which the concept or ideas involved in the work take precedence over the traditional aesthetic, technical, and material concerns. In conceptual art, the idea or concept is the most important aspect of the work. When an artist uses a conceptual form of art, it means that all of the planning and decisions are made beforehand and the execution is a perfunctory affair. The idea becomes a machine so, that makes art. I disagree with some of it because for me, the final result is an important part of it. You don't just talk about things, you actually make them. Mm -hmm. And even if you do it as a performance and the final result would be, if you do something, let's say with water and the final result would be just water on the floor, you still have to have those water on the floor right to what you wanted to do. So it could be like in a, you know, on the floor, like uh, flowing off to the audience there on the floor, whatever. It's really like everything is part of it. And you don't like say, oh, it's just an idea. No, the medium and that it is created through is part of the work. And it's a very important part of the work. And if you neglect the medium, you say, you say it's only in my head. This is not art. Only in your head, it's thoughts. It's I don't consider it that art is executing what's in your head. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I have one more question before we move to Nilly Quinn's. So, uh, when you when you're creating performance art, do you do you take into consideration the the spectators and do they become part of the art and the installation as well? Yes, yes. Okay. Especially with what I did, you know, when I did a social network, definitely they are part of the work when. You are in a certain environment. This space you are performing in is part of the work. And um, it comes to something very interesting in our new world now uh, is when we speak about this, it, it's called social art, which is another form of conceptual uh, performance art, but in which all everyone who takes part of it is 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 a creator, okay? He's part of the creators of this piece. And actually the next thing, and maybe we'll talk about it later, but the next uh, phase of Nilly, Nilly Coins project is a social art project in which uh, people who are engaging with it, including uh, investing in the tokens <laughs> or like collecting the token, I would say investing, they're part of the social art, okay? Now, the reason I'm doing it is social art is saying, hey, I need to show you something. Hey, regulators, you need to learn something, but you are not able to learn it unless you see it. So I'm going to show it to you. This is why I'm doing it as art. So everyone participating it is part of the art process. Quite fascinating itself. I pulled up the, the original Bitcoin Talk forum post about Nilly Coins, which was posted on September 14th. You see the warning there on the top? Yeah, yeah. So I'll have you explain that here in a second. Uh, this was posted September 14th, 2014. Nilly Coins as art coins and a little bit of the description. Uh, the coins will be issued in a limited edition on the Bitcoin 2.0 protocol. Coins are created as art and can gain collector's value after initial Distribution, Nilly Coins are created to promote a competitive credit provides ecosystem, a decentralized model. Right there is it meant to be. Yeah, I have tons of misspelling, by the way. That's that. <laughs> that's that. part of my <laughs> <laughs> I was misspelling everything. <laughs> no, no problem at all. A decentralized monetary system based on cryptocurrency, which will employ production power, trade volume, and social networks to create an independent coin market, a market which will then have the power to offer a viable and sustainable alternative for the monopoly of bank credit. Quite a filled and a quite dense explanation. The coin is backed by the value of my existing artwork. So when, this is just one of the coins. This, it's a oh, so this is shared. Using, this is shared right, token. This is nearly, okay. I made like 11 tokens, right? If you go, I made a, a special uh, thread for Coca-Cola coin, Disney coin. Yep. Uh, uh, and on that thread, on the, I continue, I just explained the Nili. Nili is actually a digital. The Nili coin is a digital, which was supposed to represent the collection of my physical art. But we can talk about it a little later. Okay, so, so, ni so Nili, so hold on. So, so, so Nili coins is the collective of these tokens, 
essentially, right? right? Of Coca-Cola yes. coin, Disney coin, Toyota coin, eBay coin, Twitter coin, Apple coin, Beatles coin, and USA coin. And I'm assuming there's probably some more that, that precede it. Going down this, this article, uh, the first one is ShareCoin, which says that the coins are backed by my existing artwork. Um, is Since it is first, uh, just give us a little bit of explanation, the thought behind this. And when you created these colored coins in 2014, were, was, was there any other project that was any similar to this that you maybe grabbed some inspiration from? Or this is just everything that you're pulling from the, the conceptual Web2 world and trying to apply it to uh, colored coins of Bitcoin? Well, I, I it was all from my uh, uh, head when I, after I drink some coffee. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I need the the, the coffee kind of like it's like a logic inducing uh, drug. It can make you think very clearly about things that need logical thinking. Anyway, um, I I was involved. Uh, with some social movements uh, in uh, the Occupy, around the Occupy movement uh, thing. So uh, I started dealing with um, alternative currency uh, without even knowing about Bitcoin. It was really 2012, 2011. So I wasn't aware of Bitcoin. I didn't come from technology. So I wasn't aware of it, but we started talking and experimenting with uh, alternative currency, which was already an issue. And, and by then it was clear, you know, that everything that runs everything is the economy and the way money is created. It came, came more and more clear that this has to be changed. So um, I had this knowledge. I also created some art, like my first piece relating to money was a, a, a dollar ribbon. I folded the dollar to, to make it look like a, you know, like a ribbon that you put like anything. So I, I really investigate, investigated it. And then, um, you know, when you do tokens, and like, this is also really important. Uh, once I was, I realized Bitcoin and everything, Bitcoin comes to the econo economy, it enters the economy with value. This is why it's proof of work. Uh, electricity was invested in it. So when you want to create value that you are creating, that represent you, you represent your work, you have to do it as a token on top of, uh, of, of the, um, on the base level that kind of create the securization for transaction. So I was actually waiting for color coins to come out uh, because when I was hanging around in, in the Bitcoin uh, embassy in Israel that just opened uh, like a month before I entered it, which was December 2013, um, the guys there, of course, it was almost all, <laughs> all guys, young, <laughs> your age, <laughs> like, who are you and what are you doing? That was, they were very nice and very... Uh, receptive and um, uh, so once I tried to explain what I'm looking for and uh, talking about it uh, eventually I think it was in January even somebody told me about colored coin and you know the guy that put out the paper um, from it or oh, I forgot his name right now <laughs> um, uh, you know his name oh. Which one? I'm very bad with names. <laughs> I mean, I know him personally even, but I can. Anyway, uh, he already published the colored coin uh, paper mm. and people were talking about it being coming out soon. Uh, and and as soon, you know, first it was supposed, actually the, the, the main develop, development was of uh, what's now Omni, then it was Mastercoin. But mm. a counterparty kind of came out before before them, and counterparty you didn't need to be you didn't need a developer, or you didn't have to have their uh, you know uh, have them do the token for you. You could just go in and do it. Everyone could have done it. So I I used that platform to create my tokens. Interesting. So I think name the guy who created color coins might be Alex Mizrahi. No, but he's like the one who developed the 
platform, but uh, Yoni, Yoni, Yoni. Oh my god. Oh yeah, here, here it has. Oh, oh yeah, right here. Yoni Hesse. He's actually the CEO of eToro. Yoni Hesse. It's weird. Yoni something else, not Hesse. Yoni. Are you something. sure? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, but it's Yoni. Yeah, so there's uh there's quite a creative history to this. Uh and it was dri- it you are correct, yes. Yeah, yeah. Is that the idea was driven by by Mastercoin? Right. And in- right. And actually Mastercoin uh, uh developed most of it. And, ca- and a counterparty kind of like copy paste most of it, but uh, make some other things better actually and much faster than uh, um, <coughs> Mastercoin and made it available first. Uh, and actually, I think when I created my tokens already, Mastercoin was available, but you had to speak with a developer there in order to do it or something. And I was too timid. I was like, oh, you know, I'm not. I, I don't know how to speak with developers. I'm not that. <laughs> you know, I actually had somebody, a friend from uh, the Bitcoin, uh, you know, someone someone that was coming to the embassy, showing you how important it's being real life thing. He kind of like, oh, I'll just show you how to do it on uh, Mastercoin, and I'm like, okay. So we did it on Testnet. Mm-hmm. And then a week later, I already was posting stuff on it. And I was like, oh, I should already make the coin because I'm like posting about it and somebody going to take my name, (laughs) the names and everything. And I was like, okay, let's do it. And he wasn't around and I had to like do it all by myself. (laughs) So it was like, okay, later on, I became a bit better with technology, but it wasn't, you know, I really didn't came from technology, but (laughs) I understood uh, uh, what's behind it in terms, because it's very conceptual also. And the part that are conceptual, I understand. I have no problem with this. This is what I understand. Yeah, it's very, it's very, very early. And so, so I should actually kind of like describe what color coins are. And I'm, and I'll give you my definition, then I'll let you come in, come in and uh, fill, fill the gaps. So from what I understand, colored coins uh, were introduced to Bitcoin in 2014 with the introduction of uh, OP return, which allowed Bitcoin to accept a unique, I think it was like 80, 80 megabytes or 80, 80, some sort of uh, data unit um, mm-hmm. where you can essentially mark bitcoins to have a secondary function right the what the one bit the bitcoin if i marked one bitcoin uh, you have like a dust you can it's called dust particle you kind of use a dust particle in order to create a transaction on the bitcoin network right and so With then you, you could essentially just have like these uh, these bitcoin service two functions they can still serve as the right. value but then they could serve as like what we see now is like an access token to an event, or you can have like a, a gated, essentially like a, it's a precursor to kind of like what ERC-20 tokens are now a little bit. Yeah. Uh, eventually, yeah, they were like, obviously came way ahead of ERC-20 mm-hmm. and ERC-20 yeah. uh, kind of copy the idea. And uh, they were um, created the, the trick is that in order to be on the Bitcoin network, you have to have some Bitcoin moving. You can't just move data. Data doesn't move. It has to have the token, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, the data we, as a token, as a part that is connected to a part of a token would move. Nothing else would be registered on, on the network. And the whole point is having it registered right on the, um, on the ledger. So you kind of attached the data onto this what's called a dust particle, but you wouldn't be able to see it on Bitcoin. You see only the transaction on the Bitcoin Explorer, but you would see the meaning of the transaction on the um, on Mastercoin or Counterparty Explorer, and uh, the meaning of that would be. Uh, the token that you are mo- that you moved. So each transaction is rec- recorded on the Bitcoin network, which was a very important thing for me to, at the time, to make the decision to do it on Bitcoin because there were, there started to be other altcoins that kind of enable to do tokenization. Tokenization. Uh, some um, people I don't don't even remember them, but uh, I decided to do it on Bitcoin because you know I was tackling big 
companies. And mm-hmm. I was like, you can't get me off the air. This is like, you know, it's on Bitcoin. <laughs> mm-hmm. So so here here we are. Yeah, it's, this is a great explanation. And some, some of my research um, that I, that I found different, different crew, different experimenters with colored coins all had different philosophies surrounding the color coins. It's, it's, it's quite unique and very early and primitive, but on, on this, uh, Bitcoin talk or, uh, dot org forum, as I start to explore some of the tokens, you have, you have eBay token, you have Apple token, they all have different explanations and you have this little disclaimer underneath all of them saying the token coin model is my intellectual property. <laughs> was there, yeah, was, is, is that because you are using eBay and Apple's likeness that they won't issue a, what we now see as DMCAs on, on open seas. So you're, you're kind of thinking ahead of protecting yourself. Is this some sort of like creative expression? No, I, I, no it's much more part of the art because I don't keep it. All, all through and one important part of my my uh, philosophy is that the more someone copy paste you is the best you know so uh, it gives you both it anyway there's no way you lose any single bit uh, and and the reason I, I wrote uh, my this is my intellectual property is because they always say about everything they do is their intellectual property and uh, I just said you know, uh, this model, I created this monetary model, what now is co- called tokenomic. It wasn't even a name yet. There wasn't existed. It wasn't in existence. <laughs> I created like a special monetary model that is um, fit to what, uh, you know, some industry or some product or something is. Because I think every, when you create a token and you need to give them a value, it is a really important how it's entered the economy, how it's been distributed and what uh, what it's represent. This is what gives it its value. It's not the bullshit we saw in ICOs, <laughs> you know, <laughs> later on. Uh, so, um, but making this, mark, this uh, model is my intellectual property was kind of like playing on this uh, I'm not, never gonna uh, uh, claim it for financial use, mm-hmm. you know. Saying if anyone use it uh, to claim it, but if they ever gonna try to, <laughs> you know, to at the, at tackle the... me on something or do something with it, then I'm protected. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I find I just found something quite I mean, interesting. I'll, I'll, at the very at the very end of this Bitcoin Talk forum, you wrote something that. Sounds like it's a precursor to, to to what DeFi actually is, and and kind of the uh, early early vision of what a AMM is. It says after the coins will be created and distributed, we will move into the next phase using the value power of your coins. I will offer you to participate in the first interest free credit pool. This pool will be the lender's bank to issue new coins as credit in the public in terms that will let the borrower share profit with the lender. Borrowers will become the source of future demand, and by this, will secure the future value of the pool's coins. Sounds like like just early visions of what of what DeFi is, and a combination between uh, not, AMM. not what it is, what it's gonna be. It's still not that. You know, we still even even in the beginning, you say that I'm uh, giving the vis- the provide the uh, vision for the future credit, uh, uh, different credit system that is based on, uh, not on bank uh, credit. Uh, I think we're still a bit far, well, not so. I mean, the fact that we have D5 and, excuse me, a bit stupid uh, stable coins, but it's, you know, I mean, by the way, uh, Coca-Cola coin was like a really built-in stable coin that is not based on dollar. Mm-hmm. but based on the product and the way uh, it's being used, it's create a stable coin. It, it give it like a upper and lower limit. Uh, if you go to the Coca-Cola Bitcoin talk, I explain it there because say uh, uh, you, you enter, um, uh, you have a token that is acts like a, like a coupon, like a, uh, currency that acts like a coupon, so you can buy the product, but more expensively without it. And if you use this token, you get it for less, 
then you kind of set the limit for uh, for this token because if it's going higher than what you buy the product, nobody gonna use it. If it's go lower, um, then people start using it. So you create kind of a stable coin, uh, like built-in stable coin. Uh -huh. But this is the model for Coca-Cola. You have to go to um, to the Bitcoin uh, to Coca-Cola. Look for Coca-Cola. The token should I? Is it on a different it? forum? Yeah, yeah. I made like different. It's the same forum, but it's different. Here. Uh, got, I got it right here. Reds, right? I yeah. Got it right, go. here. right. So it's different topics. Mm -hmm. By the way, you don't see the, all the images are, are lost. There was like a big Coca-Cola logo here, <laughs> but they are lost because it's a part of the art. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> was to take images only from online, what existed on the network. So some of them are lost uh, now, but it was also early URL art. I called it in some point URL art. <laughs> and now people that are, you know, doing the NFT, they start realizing that they can lose their image as well because it is hosted somewhere. Right. So this is kind of a uh, showing it. It, it. it used to have like a big uh, Coca-Cola logo on it. And I have like pictures of it. I, I took, uh, you know, I, I download it when it was, like a copy of it early on, but now it's lost. <laughs> wow. So yeah, this is the Coca-Cola coin. And uh, when you look down the uh, ICO coupon, you see the coupon coin, and this is the model. You know, you have uh, one ICO coin of uh, equal one Coca-Cola, so the bottle. One ICO coin equal F0.0 .0 Bitcoin, one Coca-Cola bottle is I, I made like big differences just to to show it but mm -hmm. it can be like really really small differences and and this way you actually create like the upper and limit the um, um, upper and uh, upper and lower limit yeah, for, for your yeah. yeah so the difference it can be 0 0.0001 and, and you create a very stable coin interesting the yeah it's almost a so it's like an early algorithmic stable coin, but it has a manual component because it counts. It's not it exactly algorithm because it is based on a product that you can, an, an actual product product you would buy with it. But I, it's a little right. with the know. with the with the balance with the balancing of it to ensure right, the, right. the the peg. Yeah, with the balancing, it is really kind of algorithmic. It's quite, yeah, it's really quite interesting. So some Here, of the... Even, wait, go down, go a little bit down. It's yep. actually Hold on, let me, I'm going to read this real quick ah, for those that okay. are just listening. Uh, the co the Coca-Cola coin is the first in a series of coins which are made to present the future of cryptocurrencies and the future of a true market which breaks the state's monopoly of currencies. To free markets, right? Uh, free. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, the point is that it's a free market without a free, uh, the most important product of it, which is currency, is not free. That's quite <laughs> so true. A limited it's not a free market. So, iCoke, the, the coupon coin sale, a limited edition of 10,000 iCoke coins have been the issued. First 10, 000K, 10K serious, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, seriously, I, I, <laughs> I burned some because the market is really kind of having a problem with my numbers, but. Uh, like those, like five of my tokens I created in a 10, 10K, because 10K is a kind of a number between being like a really a fungible kind of token and being a collectible. Right. It's also, yeah, it's it's sleek. It's easy. It's a easy number to, to do math with. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a good number to be an object for an object. Each coin will act as a coupon to buy my product at a discount. One bottle of Coca-Cola for one Coca-Cola coin. My Coca-Cola bottles are art pieces, original art prints using the Coca-Cola brand images. These RT piece can be bought using any currency, but the using the iCoke gives a discount. One coin unit for 0.01 Bitcoin and one art piece unit sells for 0.1 Bitcoin or more. So... The, the coupon coin. So this is actually, you see, like this is really the one coupon unit in equal one uh, product unit. Price of one coupon unit is smaller than price of product unit in the market. This is how you create a natural uh, stable coin. Mm -hmm. You can create a stable, a very stable coin uh, like that. And I think Coca Cola is the perfect uh, candidate to do it, by the way. <laughs> right. But but the, the, the difference here is that this. "Quote unquote stable coin 
on one side has art and then on the other side has has bitcoin that kind of counterbalances does that. that sound correct yeah well I, I you know i wanted to present it and actually do it in real mm -hmm. so my battle was a print and i said you can buy the print but it was to show everything is like to really demonstrate exactly what could be done in real life Right. Uh, the monetary benefits of the of the model, coin value stability, a value that range between the market price of the product unit and the issue price of the coupon unit. The smaller the gap was is, no less term stable coin. Then just think of it. I mean, nobody even thought of it. I yeah, I believe the tether white paper wasn't introduced till no, it's late later. 2014, 2015, But the actual product itself didn't deploy on Omni. Until much later, yeah. until much later, yeah. So, yeah, the the coupon represents the art, and then you have Bitcoin on the other side, and those two counter counteract each other to, to create this stability. Ease of rating. Yeah, this... Would you, would you say that the Coca-Cola coin was your your most ambitious work. I know, I know whenever yeah. I, I see Nilly coins, it's always associated with the, the iCoca-Cola uh, pick, uh, I got it actually I Disney also, but it's more complex. The I Disney it has a very the I Disney uh, present very complex ideas throughout the years. I had Minnie and Mickey, and then I had um, Satoshi and uh, and also Zuckerberg uh, joining them in dialogues to explain issues of identity, privacy, Web three. All of Web three is in. Disney coin, but it's it's much more complex. So, um, ICOC also was the first, so it's mm -hmm. get the attention. And this is the independent currency market. What I wrote there is also like. Mm -hmm. And then comes those uh, comments. You have to go. Yeah, yeah. Tell me. So, so, so let's really funny. <laughs> let's let's dive into this a little bit. There is on Bitcoin Talk. There is a giant warning sign across all of Nilly's right. posts that says. One or more BitcoinTalk.org users have reported that they strongly believe the creator of this topic is a scammer. While the BitcoinTalk.org administration does not verify such claims, you should proceed with caution. And most of the, the comments are individuals who aren't necessarily it's calling it a scam, but they're they're dismissing the idea and not seeing the true value. Uh, well, it was really early and, and people at the time were using names uh, right before I did my tokens. There was an issue with uh, Ken, Kena, Ke, can say his name, West, uh, that somebody did the token uh, uh, carrying his name and there was he had a lawsuit against it and they had to take it down they create another token uh, actually coin you know like a, um, like a coin like an altcoin mm -hmm. and uh, so everybody was like oh this is like a fake this is a, and 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 the comments they are really i think they are, it's funny to see it in in pers uh, perspective and also like a uh, when I commented on the comment, I managed to explain more about it. But again, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't a crowd of uh, art, artists mm -hmm. <laughs> or people who expect to see art. They couldn't relate to it. They didn't understand what the hell I'm talking about, you know? So, so. W back back then, Most of them. Back, in, back in 2014 and 2015, was there any subset of community <laughs> within the crypto space that understood the concept and that you were able to have these in-depth conversations or were you more of just like a lot, you're uh, out on an island, you're on Nilly Island on your own, introducing these I ideas and, 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 it, <laughs> and, it, and, it, and, it, and it did not stick with any, anybody. It was just no, nobody understood the concepts. Well, there was, um, the uh, economic principles I talked about, they were more understood, you know, because I was conveying how the future of tokenization is going to be looking like in terms of economy. Uh, and in 2017, and it started like 16, you, you started having the ICOs, which was a um, much more easy for people to understand. But the fact that I created it as art was totally foreign. People didn't like relate to it at all. And, um, 
And when art started being created as art, by the way, like things on name coin, it wasn't created as art, like mm -hmm. pony codes and all that. It wasn't created as art. It was created as different things. And then uh, Rare Pepe, which really kind of like, I mean, the creator um, of the um, Joe Looney, he said he saw my thing and kind of like made him think, oh, actually you can create art on that. So he, and he's not an artist. I mean, he, he didn't consider himself as artist. Now, you know, it's, people are like more feeling like they can um, take the title, which is perfectly fine. But when he did it, he didn't think he's doing art. You know, he's, that he's an artist. He created the technologies that later became uh, the marketplace, you know, all the marketplaces following what Joe Looney did, which was amazing. Uh, and he connected the, the images. By the way, when I was doing it, I, by, you know, I didn't even thought of uh, connecting an image because I didn't, I, I didn't think it was possible to do it. So this is why it was perfect for a very conceptual piece. And the images were on Bitcoin token, not on the tokens, on uh, with the tokens. And uh, however, the description is, and it's really important because when you come down to really understand what the token is, it's it's its name and description. There's no image in any of the tokens. It's just name and description. So the description is the art. And it can relate to many other things, but the art in all on it, in all NFTs, almost all NFTs, Namecoin has the the code is the image. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it, it feels like some, in terms of defining what art is, when you go to the primitive change like like Namecoin, the art is in the registry, and then famously on Counterparty, they say that the art is the token. And then when you move over to Ethereum, the art is mainly the image. And most people don't necessarily consider where the image is stored. It's not as important as it is to those who participated in Color Coins and Counterparty and Doge Party and, and Namecoin, et cetera. When, but but how, how you expressed the art through these colored coins, uh, it comes at like a, a multi-pronged approach. Sometimes you took the art as just a concept and you tried to peg it to to bitcoin to keep some sort of stabilization sometimes the the art has to do um like in this one ha the art has to do with credit and then with the the share one you're you're backing the actual token with your own artwork so you 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 you, you took art and you defined it in in a handful of very of various ways and then uh, tried to to wrap that within the token expression introducing a lot of like very uh, early ideas that are now kind of specialized and sectioned off into its own individual components. It's quite, quite interesting how, how you did this, but you also were there on, on your own. You're on your own. <laughs> yeah. And this was, you know, this was a bit frustrating, but, um, you know, I didn't expect the art portion of it to take all on so amazingly as it did in the end, uh, because, you know, the natural use of tokens is, is um, financial assets. Mm -hmm. And just because the regulator uh, uh, killed uh, ICOs with the extreme stupidity of people, which I can't even begin to understand <laughs> mm -hmm. how stupid it, it came to be wearing the ICO, like, thinking that a trillion dollar market, the whole market cap uh, metrics is, is wrong for uh, tokens. If you have a, a trillion uh, tokens and one million is trading for a dollar, it's worth much less than if you have million uh, tokens and those millions are trading for one dollar. But according to the market cap, the one that has the trillion is the higher market cap and everybody went to buy the higher market cap. Uh, XCP X yeah X whatever. yeah XCP uh, so here I'm looking at your oh, yeah. I'm looking at your Toyota coin uh, and right here in part of it ten thousand I Toyota 
It says that these coins are only a representation of the Toyota company. It goes on to, to explain a little bit more. This is also like a primitive idea of what synthetic tokens are today, like you see on synthetics and I think Mirror Protocol, where it's, uh, it's, a, it's a cryptocurrency, but it's representative of a, an actual publicly traded stock. Of course, actually, they- this is no, this is even more. This, this, the Toyota uh, uh, introduced the idea of having the hardware connected to the token. So the token itself represents pieces of the hardware. Imagine like, um, like all, 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 all of your car is, is, is a computer, right? Mm-hmm. So you can actually part of the program or, or a kind of like a be get ownership of part of the programs, the program that uh, turns the key on, the, pro- the past mm-hmm. part of the pro- program that run the car in different ways. So you basically buy it in quanta of, uh, of data, eventually to own the whole car while it runs the whole time, of course, but you don't need to take credit from the bank to buy it because at any point, the manufacturer can basically lock your key and you have a, uh, a box of uh, metal that you can't move at all. So you have to keep paying it or figuring out a way to... So every time that you pay, you get a quanta and if you resell it or sell it in the middle, this quanta, uh, which each token is uh, uh, holding um, uh, um, as data, is... Um, so it's you know it's very advanced in terms of that that uh, you know the manufacturer have to work with it, but then you don't need to take credit anymore. You kind of buy it in pieces, as if you bought a wheel and then a uh, you know and then the lights and everything. But you buy a full working car. Yeah, quite quite interesting. Yes, yeah, so the token represents more than just the the equity of the company. I did pull up something here. Um, uh, yeah, this is my water. The water. I, I, I was Not just call from blue and sky have to run out. Yeah, I, I came across this uh, in the the Bitcoin Talk forum. Uh, water W H A T A R. I believe was your early Twitter account, which this yes, is some indeed. of this is some of the conceptual art that you were discussing earlier. Correct. Right. Right. I called those. I made like bracelet i called it you see in these famous people and uh, the, the time this guy was uh, uh, what's his name uh, you have uh, king, yeah they, they they were like uh, him and kings uh, this is the actor this actor and i and, and i and I, b- I believe this from what i read was around 2007 of Twitter. Yeah, this was Twitter. in t- 2007, uh, and I made them a I'm real b- bracelet, a kind of a saying I'm real with my Twitter account, it's me real. And this is developed later. I have a Twitter a token by Twitter, <laughs> and it's actually developed all the way to claim your uh, account, your handle na- name as your identity. <laughs> Quite interesting. So it's funny how, I mean, it's nothing I thought of when I did that. I was like so early. There was no Bitcoin. It was 2007. There's uh, no, yeah, there's no, there's no Bitcoin. Uh, Twitter was nothing. created in 2006. So you're one of the, the yeah. early, early birds, no pun intended, on, on Twitter. I, I had more followers than I, ha- I have today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, the buy, the no, buy. Well, not so, no, I mean, here I didn't have more. When I deleted it, I had like a eighteen hundred followers. I think the the bi- now I have like seven hundred followers. Or something. <laughs> the bio of your Twitter account says, uh, "Artist using Twitter as my art form. The original artwork are my actual tweets. It is conceptual trash, trash way postmodern and beyond contemporary." So you are very aware of uh, how. Of how philosophical of an approach you're taking to these tweets, and when you look and at you the tweet, see like when, the, you when, see the tweet on the top. Yeah, uh, yep. Got a call got from, a blue call from Blue and Sky. Blue and Sky have to run out, so I created those character. Like Watar was a character, and Blue and Sky were, were a character, and Twitter was a character, and they kind of had conversation there as well. And later on, with my uh, Disney coin, I created those. I, I kind of use the same ca- character talk with Minnie and Mickey in this case. But 
Some some of these some of these suites that you look at, it looks like binary code with some stars and some some emoticons and stuff. But uh, there's a popular trend in ENS called palindromes, which uh, this some of these would almost be considered as palindrome, just with a name in the beginning. Yeah, which you is know like there reverse. was like a whole thing there called uh, Twitter art uh, that people start using symbol. I I wasn't a graphic uh, designer, so I didn't even know how to use those all kind of symbols. But people use those simple to create, like somebody created a whale, <laughs> for example, because you couldn't, you could only use a symbol. You couldn't paint, have a picture. So they kind of created the picture and became like a bit of a trend, you know, and this started it. People that start seeing what I was doing and did that. <laughs> they remember me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a, this was a quite a, an interesting account. So, so now we move into like where we are today and I, I opened up emblem vault, which is where some of your, uh, you've wrapped some of, or you vaulted some of your, your early artwork or conceptual artwork. You see that some of them are flagged. I'm trying to figure out now. Yeah. We might have to, uh, reach out to Shannon to figure that out. Do you? No, it's not channel flagged. It's flagged by, uh, Oh, by OpenSea. I think so. Be careful, but, as flagged. Yeah. So, I, I, yeah. So you you basically you took the do you take the colored coins and you put it into this vault? Is that what it? Which, right, what right. So what happened is that you know for a few years, like my to my coins were <laughs> deep in my vaults, right? <laughs> and I thought, you know, you know, I'll never get back to it because you know I did the, the art with it I did the, the show in 2015 nothing catch up uh, caught there and I was like okay that's the end of this I was involved with some uh, actually ICO for a while some uh, early ICO in 2016 that never came to be which was about a solution for fake news which is still <laughs> something that we can work on one day and then I got involved with other things and totally forgot about my tokens. And then when um, in 2019, somebody invited me to the rare art uh, event that was there. I didn't even follow what's going on because I didn't follow that closely what's going on with Ethereum. And then I realized this whole NFT thing is happening. And, and even then I, I went in into this show, I, I met uh, Jason and, and uh, actually also um, Joe Looney first time. And I, so I met a few people and, and the guys that did uh, CryptoPunk. But I was like, you know, I'm not like a digital artist in this respect. I'm not like using uh, computers to do my art. My art is much more about the medium or the technology, not the, the, using the technology to create image, but using the technology uh, as a con concept. So I didn't uh, investigate into it too much. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I didn't think my coins will catch up. Mm -hmm. And then when the 69 million thing happened and people start talking about who was first and everything, I was like, okay, maybe I should like <laughs> get back into the scene. However, it wasn't simple because uh, my work is, as you see, is very complex, has many level to it. And the fact that it's not what people at the time consider as NFT. Mm -hmm. And this is something we should cover, I think a little bit. Yeah. What exactly okay. is an NFT? and the development of that because um, the fact that NFT became a thing when it was one of one uh, based on the Ethereum uh, contract, it's actually um, kind of like a partial part of the metadata. The, the, the basic, the ERC-20 allows you to put as many, as, as many uh, the number when you do like uh, how many are minted, you can put any number you want. Mm -hmm. So they restricted it to one one to make it easy for the use of what this, uh, it was then thought you more as, as a notary on or type of things for object, you know, that are di digital. And it's made sense to, to make that contract such that you don't have to choose <laughs> uh, the number, but it comes as one of one. Uh, and this is how it starts being uh, familiar. But the original, 
I mean, even the name fungible is like a financial name. It's, it has nothing related to the technology. Okay, it's 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 financial, meaning that they can like uh, be exchanged with the same value. But even when you think of a dollar, each dollar is different. It has a different number. Each each dollar is an NFT. It's not fungible. The real dollar is in the real world. It's not fungible. Right, because they all have their own individual serial code. Exactly. Number. So in our world, each one of them is an NFT <laughs> of itself. Okay. And when I created my tokens, uh, this is when I heard this term first time because supposedly there was like the uh, bitcoins are the fungible, which is the layer, the basic layer. And then any token on, on top of it is non fungible because. Uh, Coca-Cola coin won't, won't, not going to have the same value as uh, Let's Talk Bitcoin, which created the token there, and not as the, so. So they are non-fungible. This is when uh, the first time this uh, term was used in terms of trying to explain tokenization. Tokens are non-fungible in their essence. Uh, in this, in this, so. This was when it was first uh, introduced, and also technology. In, in terms of the technology, it's all about the data. The data is what makes it non-fungible. It's the name, the description, and the uh, part of the data can be one of one, or one of a hundred, or one of a million. Yet it's non-fungible because it's so. That's uh, the origin of that uh, non-fungibility, which later made sense to translate into one of one because we're talking about object and want each one to be different. There is, mm -hmm. so I wouldn't like say that it's hundred percent the same, but it's, uh, it's still, if you look at the technology and the data, it's basically the same. It just, yeah, I think the a, number. a lot of us that hang out in the, the, the early NFT space are, are fairly aware now that NFT is not applicable to to most of the the pre ERC pre ERC seven twenty one tokens. So pretty much anything before the standardization, or you can say even before Ethereum, the the technologies didn't really exist back then. So the the idea of what an NFT I mean, is the, doesn't really exists. apply. It exists. It's not true because it exists when I think it's in a different form though. It's not. It's well, not. It wasn't as could, complex. If I would if I would write. When you, when I uh, had to choose how many tokens I'm minting, I could choose one. Right. If I would put one, it was perfectly exactly the same as a, as a non fungible, uh, as what we call now non fungible token. It's only the difference between having it in one and locked. Okay? Right. One uh, well, well, one also the the, the the store the image storage solutions didn't necessarily exist back, back then as well IPFS. yeah but the image is not what make it uh, uh, an, an nft what's make it an nft is the description and the name of the, the token. data even, okay even not the description the name because the description you could even change that i think yeah it's kind of an, another mint it's almost like a mint when so, so the when, when but the name itself is what the token is the name I'll use I'll use a placeholder for now as unique tokens because they all provide they all they all possess a, a unique data set which um, then therefore gives them the individuality. Do you as if we think about like describing them to to the future generations or to people who participate now, should there be a uniform name or label to all of the unique tokens, or do you think they should be? A, uh, decipher differently in the terms of like crypto collectibles or financial tokens, et cetera. How do, how do we go about it if nothing is not necessarily everything fits the, the one like mold? Well, first of all, when we look at the future and we look at the importance of NFT is not the financial importance. It's really creating Web3 and creating a virtual reality, a digital reality. Okay. And the way we define something as being an object, a digital object is so crucial to the development of Web3. Now, uh, the concept of, um, uh, of Namecoin, for example, that's, that an object, the token can be expired, raise the question, uh, what is the object in this scheme? Because if we say the token is the object and it is expired, 
then the new mint of a token is a new object, an object that was never existed before. However, there are um, the, um, uh, the ledger state and, and, and have a placeholder for that, mm -hmm. uh, for that object. So we can say maybe this object exists in theory, like what I, I try to explain maybe as an ideal, the Plato notion of an ideal, right? But it doesn't actually exist until it is being minted as a token. Right. It's, uh, it's, um, it, it's essentially with, with Namecoin and ENS, at Emmercoin, there's a handful of them that are registration or, or rentals. When the, to when, the, when, when, when the token is originally created, it's it's almost like the birth certificate is is being created, but then there's essentially no death certificate right. because it can always well, expire no, and then there, be born again. Yeah, it's like, exactly. It's, it's, when you think of it in terms of physical life and real life, which Web3 would have to... Um, to express in some way uh, or find a way to translate which you know the, the digital the, the physical world to the digital world but in a way we can say that we translate the digital world to the physical world so mm. it shouldn't be that hard i mean the real three-dimensional thing is is an illusion so we kind of break gonna break this illusion understand it and recreate it in in uh, in web3 uh, so um uh, what were we? Uh, <laughs> so, so in, ter uh, in terms of uh, the token, the, the birth certificate, the birth certificate of Nili is not Nili. I'm Nili, okay? I'm not my birth certificate. So what is the real thing? I'm the token, okay? I'm the real thing. Mm. Uh, and when I die, someone else can be called Nili, but it's not going to be the same Nili uh, that was created, uh, was born then. So if it is carrying uh, exactly my name and everything, you can say, okay, it's a clone of me, but is it really the same Millie? I mean, imagine you could clone me 100%. This is the data. If you have all the data, you could clone me physically. So then is it still me that had one life and died? Anyway, it's, it's very questionable. It's very interesting questions because, as I say, uh, Web3 is not about fun games and whatever. It's really the next level of life. We're not going to go to the moon and all this, or, or not, not the moon, to, to Mars. We're going to live in a digital life. And, and uh, not that I care about it that much, but it's, you know, it's uh, <laughs> inevitable. We're gonna get there. So and this is what we're creating now. It's, you know the the rules by which it's gonna be created. Uh, along this like ideological um, thought process, w when you think about the comparison between real the the physical reality and then the digital reality of tokens, do you would you would you consider humans an expression of data, or would you can consider data an expression of of, of human? Uh, of, 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 of human work, I guess. Well, it's both. You are a medium of expression, okay? We are, each of us is a technology. You can say biology is a technology, okay? It's, it's a technology of life. Life is the data, the plan, whatever. It's the plan, it's the program. Life is, the, is the, what's there. And then this is the, our bi biology communication between, uh, you know, the chemical things between uh, the different parts of us is all a, it's a technology. And so we are like the robots of biology robots, okay? Eventually talking about consciousness, I believe that the network creates consciousness and it will be created, basically blockchain, being a network will create consciousness of syn synthetic uh, life, the next thing that would be which just like in the movie here, we're not gonna understand it, okay? Mm -hmm. Just like my, my cells don't understand me talking to you. They are totally different. Uh, my community of cells, they are the community that I'm serving. There's not, not such a thing as Nili. Nili doesn't exist. It's a concept that um, I have to 
like the program have to create self-awareness in order to take care of its community. So I, I believe it would uh, emerge eventually as well for networks. You express ideas that Vitalik uh, discusses a lot about how the, the primitive form of uh, of blockchain was used for finance because finance has to be, and the transfer of value has to be the underbelly of what this digital world is really going to represent. But the majority of token issuance in, in the, in the, the digital world or whatever that expression is, is going to be just unique transactions that, and, uh, and conversations and, and interactions that necessarily don't have a financial component, but they could have a, a, a social component to it or an intellectual component. And so we begin to I'm start, pretty, yeah. we, so. we, we begin, we begin transferring social capital and intellectual capital and sexual capital and political capital, which comes in a form of a, of a token and financial capital is just a, the, is just the the foundation for for all of this other token emittance and issuance and transfers in the future. Well, first of all, I think uh, I'm pretty sure uh, Satoshi was aware of that as well when mm. he created Bitcoin. Um, so, I think at this point it's a bit important to understand what money is. Money is. Um, express trust as something that is real, okay? So we kind of materialized trust into a real object that we can exchange between us. Now, the, the thought of it, that trust is being an object is one amazing thing. The other thing then when we created credit, credit is amazing because credit means that something that would happen in the future, we are now uh, using it as if it's real. This is what credit is, which is like, I, I keep saying that money is credit is the most amazing spiritual uh, uh, creation of humankind, but like everything that human create, first they kill with it and then they realize the power of it for, to give life. Uh, until it kills people, they don't realize how powerful it is. Uh, so we basically, you know, uh, made money to kill people, and uh, and now we realize start realizing that its power to actually create life, which is the so uh, there was no way to get into the digital uh, uh, next level of of existence without going through money. Okay, as expressing everything. Um, I mean, think of money this way. You know, in, in our biology technology, you have to feel pain and um, you have to feel pain and pleasure in order to know if something is good or bad for you. In our economic world, you can see a balance and know if you are in risk or if you are in a good shape. You don't have to feel pain. I mean, practically, we, are, we created a system that allows us to measure our security in terms of numbers rather than pain and, uh, and, and pleasure. Um, so that's, that's what money is. The fact that, uh, you know, it's a <laughs> you're using many bad ways. It's because people, I would have to say it again, are so fucking stupid and don't <laughs> realize that if the person next to them is miserable, they are gonna end up being miserable. You have to make sure that the person next to you is as well be as you could. Of course, you can't give him your last uh, piece of bread um, when you know you're not never going to get more bread. I mean, you can still give it because there's better chance for both of you to, to live. Eventually, we are social uh, creature because this is what worked. And our economy, economy are not, wasn't still able to, to give us this value into the in the economy that's why we keep value system right we keep value like a moral value because our economy weren't able to do it but the whole thing with tokenization it's so related to uh, to community and now we start seeing it token is a community and 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 the, the well the value of a token is the the strength of the community it's such a direct uh, link to it. There's nothing 
uh, mysterious about it. It's just that when it was, it's a monopoly, you don't see it because it's a, mo a monopoly, you have no choice. You have to be part of, a, of this one community or state. So it's not clear, but now it's it start be, being clear, and then uh, money would start serving differently. I think <laughs> the, the the rise of of crypto punks and and board apes, I think, has put that idea of uh, social capital surrounding uh, tokens um, into the mainstream. And yeah, it, it, it's made it, it very clear. Yeah, very clear. It, I mean. A lot of good things came from very simple-minded. <laughs> you know, it, it's sometimes you know it's much better. I mean, nobody understood what I was talking about. You know, uh, you need like the simple things to make it happen, and it's very. I think the development of board ape is really important. What's happening there? And by the way, the fact they realize also that you know, eventually it's uh, NFT doesn't do it. You know, you, you actually need something that uh, they made the, the board, uh, the ape, to, uh, ape, to, ape coin, coin, because the market can deal with NFTs. It's not a market thing. NFTs. It's okay for like very uh, unique uh, type of thing, but it doesn't fit really the market. So they start like fractionalizing and all that. Yeah. I a lot created of my tokens in numbers that the market would like, but the market right now was, had a really big problem with it. And I had a very hard time deciding to burn some because I know in the future, it's the right numbers I made, but uh, I ended up burning because <laughs> I live now and I have to be, you know, considering, you know. Yeah, some of the new this circumstances. Is of, this is part of a... Uh, of the medium, okay, the market itself. And I can't like just uh, make it be what I want to be. So I kind of play in between. <laughs> so uh, I was just to end with like one question before. I definitely have to bring you back for another conversation. But when you think of like crypto as a whole, the non-fungible markets, the fungible markets, what what is the most important dynamic that was introduced to crypto as a whole that's kind of revolutionized the game? Do you think it's the market? Is it the the underlying technology? Is it the uh, ambiguous nature of what a token can be? What do you think was the, the, the game-changing factor uh, to crypto that um, has, has revolutionized the, the, the way we, we interact with one another, with financial assets, with all of these different degrees? It's Bitcoin, it's all in Bitcoin, and it's an important thing to say, proof of work. There's this whole conversation about proof of work. It's like the, the only reason it could succeed is being a proof of work, because it can't be coming, like all this uh, st um, proof of stake is, is coming from the financial market ideas. It's when something already has value, you can use it as staking, but how is it creating its value? It has to create its value from something. Uh, I mean. It's so genius to do it as, as a proof of work for it, because it's the keeping of the records that costs the, uh, the, the money uh, that secure the, the network, right? And, you, and yeah, you, you expend a lot of energy on playing uh, you know, some numbers, <laughs> not on the, just keeping the record, but you need this. Uh, and by the way, I think in the future, although this power is going to be used for memory, pulling memory, because we're going to need so much uh, power to, for our AI to pull out memory. So all the proof of work would be just storing and pulling memory from the storage. And so, uh, but it, at first, the, the reason it's, it's proof of work, it has to be uh, uh, put into units like the, the power have to be exact unit in order to to play this uh, this game fair. So the the only way to do it is to do like the stupid um, um, game. It's actually doing that. It's looking for the uh, the right uh, <laughs> uh, nouns or whatever it is. Uh, anyway, uh, when people are talking about uh, proof of work being harmful to environment, uh, they have to think about uh, how money is created today, and it's uh, the the cost of money is blood. 
it's not energy, it's blood. Every 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 dollar that is created is is created by some by wars and power like that that is uh, that can kill people. So um, this energy thing is bullshit. Is trying to uh, to get to weaken Bitcoin uh, because it's the only decentralized uh, network. It's it's made to weaken it. And especially that a lot of the energy is like green energy. And there's many other ways to, okay, it will waste a little bit of energy, but it will free everyone from wars. And then we can actually create the, so blood versus uh, electricity, I think it's still better than electricity. And it should be, this is, this, this is the argument, the main argument. And it's very easy to forget how bloody every dollar is. I completely, uh, I completely agree with that. There's a lot of very interesting points that I have not heard of, um, especially with when it comes to proof of stake. That in order to to generate capital, it has the capital that's already been created, which was uh, invested in the ICO in the beginning of Ethereum, and it goes on and on. But we could have that conversation for we'll save yeah. for another time because we could probably go on for three hours about it. Uh, but Nilly, this is a, a very, very fascinating conversation. You're a very deep thinker. And uh, now that we've had this conversation, I can understand much better, not only colored coins and nilly coins, but uh, some of the, the great minds and philosophers that are, that are in our sector, the, how they think about the past, the future, and the present. So uh, thank you for sharing your time with us. Really appreciate it. And thank you for being such a good host and able to follow up and ask questions. <laughs> we're definitely gonna have to run it back for round two soon. We're gonna we're gonna run it back for round two sometime. Okay. Any 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 topic, any question, any I can rent about it forever. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll definitely do that. Well, I really appreciate it, and uh, thank you guys for listening and watching. We'll catch you next time. Thank you. It's been great uh, talking with you. <laughs> Bye.